data here so I'm making a video on variance covariance standard deviation correlation and regression and I'm treating all those things like in the same video because I think it's important actually to kind of go through them quickly so you can see how they're all related and uh, you know every story has to start with somewhere and I think for a data scientist or data analyst, the story starts with variance, and I, I'm hoping to show you why. At least that's my opinion. So I'm going to start with data empty cars, and then I'm going to create a histogram. I take empty cars, I use the pipe operator, which you read as and then, and then I empty cars and then. I put it into ggplot, and I'm creating a distribution of the mile per gallon vector, and I'm calling it distribution of mile per gallon. Here we have a histogram of our data. Now we can see that this histogram is a little bit right skewed. So when you're thinking about the measure of center, you might think about the mean or the median. If the data is skewed, you might want to think about median as being a better measure of center, like with housing prices, for example. And also when you think about the spread of a distribution, you could think about the variance or standard deviation. But you could also think about uh, the interquartile range and the IQR is also a version of thinking about the spread of a variable with that is sort of more fitting in some cases when the distribution is, is skewed. So let's stick with mean and variance since they're sort of the more common ones. Um, and uh, they have sort of neater equations in some way. So mean of empty cars miles per gallon is 20, and the variance is uh, 36. So the mean, you just take all the mile per gallon values, you add them all up, and you divide by the number of observations. Variance is a little bit more abstract. You interpret variance as the average of the square distances from the mean. So here's the variance for formula, S2, is how you call variance. What you do is you take each x variable and you subtract the mean of x. So each mile per gallon value, you subtract the average from it. That's actually called centering the data. If you take each value and subtract the mean and then add that all up, uh, you end up with zero because you're subtracting the average from each value and adding that all up, so you end up with zero. There's as many positives as there are negatives. However, so that so what you have to do is you take each variable, you subtract the mean, and then you have to square it before adding it all up. And then you divide by n minus 1. You could also divide by n. Dividing by n minus 1 is what you do in the case of sample variance. So you can actually see that when you create variance for yourself by using the same formula, you get 36. So the R programming language assumes with the VAR function that it's doing sample variance. That's actually different than Python. Python will assume that it's doing population variance. So it puts n in the denominator and not n minus 1. So it's a little weird to think about the average of the square distances from the mean that's a little abstract, and so what people do is they talk about the standard deviation. So they take the square root of everything in the variance. So the square root of the variance is the standard deviation. And what that does is it puts it back onto the scale of the actual data. And then you expect, if the data is normally distributed like a bell curve, that 68% of the observations are plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. And similarly, similarly you expect 95% of the observations to be um, plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. So, okay, on to covariance. Covariance here is like variance, except you're comparing two different variables. So you use COV instead of VAR to get the covariance of two variables. This is the covariance of miles per gallon and weight. Here you can see this is the covariance formula. It's the sum of x minus the mean of x multiplied by y minus the mean of y, all divided by n minus 1. And um, here you can actually see that instead of taking x minus the mean of x squared, you're taking x minus x multiplied by y minus y. So what this means is that variance is actually a special case of covariance 
the covariance of a variable with itself is actually just the variance. So let's here take the sum of miles per gallon and weight. Here we get the covariance between these two variables. Now the covariance function is more commonly sort of used as a matrix where you read the off diagonal elements as being the variance uh, or the covariance between these two variables and the diagonals weight where weight meets and where miles per gallon meet is the covariance of a variable with itself, which is just the variance. And of course, you can have more than two variables in your covariance matrix. You can have many. And what happens is the covariance matrix ends up being a square, and it's also symmetric. Symmetric meaning that it would look the same even if you flipped it over its diagonal. Now here, is the equation for covariance as it's commonly written. You take the sum of x minus x bar, meaning the mean of x, multiplied by y minus y bar, meaning the mean of y, and you divide by the product of the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. Um, now the, um, so, so this is the, uh, so you can also think that, um, the correlation, I should really say, I, I, sh I should really say also, one second, that's, uh, excuse me here. So this is actually the equation for correlation. That's the C-O-R, the correlation between X and Y is the covariance of X and Y multiplied by the product of the standard deviations. The covariance, the covariance of X and Y is actually divided by N minus 1, similar to variance. So the covariance of X and Y is the sum of X minus X bar and Y minus Y bar divided by N minus 1. And the correlation, the way of putting that back on the scale of the data, is to take the covariance and divide it by the product of the standard deviation of X times the standard deviation of Y. Now, the equation for correlation if, can sometimes be written as covariance of x and y divided by the product of these standard deviations, but sometimes it's also written as this formula here, the sum of x minus x bar and y minus y bar divided by, and you have the square root here. So, so this might be right here the more common equation you see for correlations. But you will see that this equation and this equation are really just the same. They're derived from each other. And I'm displaying that here. Because in the top, you have the covariance of x and y that has n minus 1 in the denominator of the top. And here, the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y also have an n minus 1 in the de denominator. So if you take 1 half divided by 1 half, it's equivalent to taking one half multiplied by two. So all of these n minus ones cross off, and you can picture how when all these n minus ones cross off, you end up moving from one equation to the other. They're both the same thing. So here I have the correlation of miles per gallon and weight, negative 0.86. The correlation value is always between negative one and one. And uh, the negative correlation says that these things aren't really associated at all, and a positive correlation shows that they are. Um, and here I'm also doing the code, the covariance divided by the standard deviations, and you see that it evaluates to the same thing. And similar to co covariance, I can also make a correlation matrix. And here the diagonals show the cor correlation with, of a variable with itself, which is always one and the off diagonal elements are the correlation of one variable with another. And just like covariance, this is a square matrix that's symmetric, meaning when you flip it over its diagonal, it's the same. So here, what I'm going to do now is create a scatter plot. Uh, on, the, on, the, <coughs> on the x variable, on the x axis, I put weight, and on the y axis, I put miles per gallon. And here I use a little, uh, I use a tilde, and that sort of means miles per gallon as a function of weight. I always put, you know, the y in here, and that's the same form as when you create a linear model object in R. So here's a scatter plot. When you create a scatter plot, it already sort of implies a relationship. 
your mind like almost wants to immediately just draw a line through it since we're so used to seeing that. And so what is the equation of the linear regression line uh, that, would, that would go through this scatter plot? Now, a linear regression line, what, is, what it does is it minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So again, we're back to sort of talking about variance. We're talking about this, this aspect of squaring, which can also be expressed in linear, in linear algebra when you take a vector and you multiply it by its transpose, taking the dot product of a vector with its transpose is, the is, a, is equivalent to taking the sum of the squares. Anyway, so a closed form equation for finding the slope of the line, A, is you take the correlation and you multiply it by the quotient of the standard deviation of Y divided by the standard deviation of X. And what that does is it puts the, uh, the slope of the line back onto the scale, the, it puts the correlation <coughs> back onto the scale of the data that you're looking at. And you can also find the intercept i by taking the mean of y and then you subtract your slope multiplied by the mean of x. And here I can just put into g um, a b line my equations. And here I did it the long way just to show that it works. And here I get my OLS linear regression line. And that always passes through the mean of x and the mean of y. Now I can also, if I wanted to create something that I think is called the standard deviation line, so instead of taking the correlation, the r value, and multiplying it by the quotient of sy and sx, I could just take negative 1. And then the intercept is the same equation. But what I end up with is a different line that is not the linear regression line, but is the standard deviation line. And I put the standard deviation line here in, uh, in orange, and I made it dotted. And this also, just like the OLS linear regression line, it passes through the mean of x and the mean of y. And so I put that as a big orange dot using um, this geom point layer of ggplot just to show how they intersect as a sort of fulcrum. Now when the correlation between these variables is very high, the standard deviation line is going to be very close to the OLS linear regression line. But when the correlation is very low, you'll see that this line becomes much different than the OLS linear regression line because the lines be become much more different as the R value changes. Um, and so, uh, and so this I also hope explains a bit how the interpretation of the linear regression line is you talk about the variance of y, to bring it back to variance, the variance of y is, uh, is explained by x. So with linear regression, just to kind of <clears throat> end on this note, is if you didn't have any information about y, your best guess for miles per gallon would be like the mean of miles per gallon. It would be the average miles per gallon. That's the guess that would minimize error in the long run. But we know we have two dimensions, not one. We also know weight. So our best guess for miles per gallon is no longer the mean of miles per gallon, the best guess is, well, it depends on the mean of, uh, it depends on weight. So you look at the weight to find um, what can be explained by y. So there, there's an averaging that takes place. And I think I'm going to just add one more final thing, just to make this super clear, is correlation between two variables. When you talk about the correlation, empty cars and weight and empty cars miles per gallon. To get the R squared from a linear model, you're actually just squaring. <clears throat> you're just squaring the correlation. So 0.75 would be the R squared of the linear model miles per gallon as a function of weight. And what that does is it takes this correlation number that's between negative 1 and 1 
and it ensures that the value is going to between is going to be between zero and one. So you would, so it changes the interpretation of that variable just a little bit. And really, I think that's the purpose. All right. I uh, hope this was helpful. Bye.